Okay, today we're gonna do the mouth lab design. So I'm gonna walk you through problem, gathering information, hypothesis, and test. And then you're gonna go finish the test design. So you've already learned about the mouth. You've already learned a little bit about indicators, which I have here on my lab table. I have some indicators. I have a food solution. I have a little saliva that we're gonna talk about. Ooh, yummy. You're gonna to wanna to get your notebook ready, <laughs> handy dandy, and you're gonna write problem. This is the first thing we work on. Our problem, I don't know if I need a colon there because that's a title. Our problem is going to be what gets digested in the mouth. What gets digested? Is this too far to the right? No, I'm following you. In the mouth. Follow the leader. <laughs> All right, if we were in class, I would say, what step comes next? And hope that you would respond, gather info. I think at this point you're getting there, right? Okay, so gathering information is, what do we know that will help us understand what gets digested in the mouth? And we already know some things about food. So we've talked about food and what food actually, what we mean by the word food. Um, and we've talked about our foods being protein, um, starch, uh, glucose or sugar, and fat. And we maybe even talked about these two things being our carbs. I find that a lot more kids know what a carb is now that kids are into carbs or whatever when they're dieting. Um, and then we've also learned a little bit about indicators. Um, this one you might be able to tailor a little to your lab because if you're studying starch, you kind of care about iodine. If you're studying um, sugar, you care about sugar. So you're gonna maybe pick one of your indicators here and you're gonna add it, but you'll say what it tests for. So you would write in this spot like, Iodine tests for starch by changing from yellow to black. You'd write that out here, okay? So you'd put some stuff about indicators there. And then you might also put something about saliva. If we're gonna write a mouth lab, we might wanna know what saliva is made of. So in your reading, you hopefully learned what saliva was made of. And you probably learned that it is a water plus an enzyme. And the enzyme's name is amylase, which is kind of a detail you don't really need, but I'll put it on there anyway. Um, we might want to know that chemical digestion is when we break large molecules into small molecules. I don't know, do we call them macromolecules? I think some of the teachers call it macromolecules okay. or polymers. Miss Bawalda is my camera woman today. Oh, yes, yeah, she's... and I'm just doing an excellent job, <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> she's really good. <laughs> Those are most of the things I usually put in problem and gathering information. Hypothesis, I will let you write with your groups. Um, but that's gonna be, you'll write something like blah, is digested in the mouth. Like, you'll be in charge of that. Um, in terms of how to set it up, these are the things that you have, and I'll give you kind of the gist of what we normally do. So we're gonna set up an experimental and a control for each food type. So for example, if I have my starch solution right here, I would put some starch solution in each of these. Psh, I'm pretending right now. And I would psh, and then to one of them, I would add our saliva. Oh, it took me so long. Yeah, we've been even, spitting oh, all day. Cotton mouth bad. <laughs> we don't actually spit into these. I'd be like no, a COVID we're, we're nightmare. No, we're having fun. <laughs> um, we actually use uh, an enzyme called diastase, and we just put a little bit in there, and then we mix it into one of them and not into the other. So your experimental would have the saliva and your control would probably just be water. And then we would test them with the indicators to see if they got digested. 
And we'll talk a little more about that. I, should I draw a little bit of a test? Yeah, maybe just okay. to help them, because I like to do pictures and labeling stuff. So when you go to write your test, it's going to probably have a picture of a couple of test tubes. And I'm going to assume that this is for starch, let's just say. And if I was doing starch, I would put starch in both of them. Okay. And then I would add my saliva to one. And I would add just water to the other. And I have a question, Mrs. Weiss. Yes. Which one would be kind of the normal <laughs> setup? Because I'm always after my kids about what would be the normal kind of setup? This guy right here would be what we call the control or the normal. And this guy over here would be our experimental group because we added the independent variable, okay? Once we've done this kind of a setup, and really for you to do your lab, you're probably gonna write some steps about how somebody would actually do that. So you'd have a couple steps about how to set this up. Then you would let them sit overnight and you would use indicators, indicators to see if starch is present. So if I'm doing starch, I would say, instead of use indicator, I'd say use iodine to see if food is present. Good luck. <laughs>